buddy. That was unbelievable. I was rocking out so hard over here. <laughs> I saw you knocked over the, the, the swish crash. That over swish there. crash is always a casualty of my plan. Yeah, it always is. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another live lesson. Sean Lang's here with us again. How's it going, Sean? It's going good. Yeah? I'm a little of breath, but... No. A little of breath. Got a little bit of sweat going on there. Uh, a little bit of sweat. Uh, whatever. I sweat a little bit when I play. You're Just a tiny bit. You're a beast on those bass or on those double bass uh, pedals there, man. I tell <laughs> you. Welcome, guys. We're talking about um, the, the flat foot technique today. Yes, the flat foot technique. And uh, welcome everyone who's here for the first time. All you Drumio members, welcome again. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is talking just briefly a little bit about just warming up your feet. And then we're going to dive right on into how to do the flat foot technique. And what, mm -hmm. what were you doing in there? Was that the flat foot technique? That was the flat foot. And then towards the end, there was some more mid-tempo... Uh, uh, bass drum run, so it was it was actually a little bit more heel or heel up as you probably would have noticed. Cool. And what but what uh, what were you playing there? What was that song called? That song is called Lore. It's by First Rain, and uh, it's going to be on an album that we're hopefully releasing this summer. So that song is almost just finished being tracked, but you heard kind of a rough cut right there. Very cool. I'm yeah. excited for it. Okay, guys, get your questions in for all you Drumio members who uh, have questions. I know we haven't taught anything yet, but as they come through or as the questions come, please submit them right away. Uh, we are going to give away some more stuff today. Every every Monday we give away stuff. We're going to give away two shirts. Um, so if you don't have a Drumio shirt yet, actually we have two different kinds of shirts. Give me one second here. We have our standard black one. Okay, we're going to give away one of these. We also have the new one, which I don't know if anybody has seen yet. The new one. Check it out. Sweet. The new Drumio gray shirt, guys. I'm going to give one of those away as well. I'm also going to give away two month memberships. So how do you do that? Well, all you do is go to facebook.com forward slash Drumio, like the page. And this time, I want you to post on our wall. I want to ask a question to you guys. I want to ask what type of uh, foot technique do you use? Do you use heel up? Do you use heel down, flat foot, swivel, slide technique, heel toe? What else is there? I'm probably missing some. Did you say swivel? I did say swivel. Okay. Um, but... Let us know what you use and why you use it. I would like to know because we're always, oh, I keep hitting the mic here. We always get in the questions, you know, oh, what's the most popular foot technique or how do I learn heel toe? How do I learn slide? So I'd love to hear what exactly you use and how you use it and why you use it. Um, and then we're going to get some questions. It's going to be a lot of fun. And if we have time, hopefully another play along because that was amazing. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Good to go. Are you ready to, you ready to dive right on in? Yeah. So um, before we get too far into the flat foot technique, um, I'll, I'll say now the flat foot technique isn't something that's applicable to everything that you're playing. So if you're going to be playing uh, slower double bass parts like you know that fast, for example, that's going to be strictly you know heel up, heel down, whatever you're most comfortable with. There's no there's no point in using the flat foot. Uh, flat foot really comes into play. Um, uh, think of it as almost like energy saving mode when you're really really pushing hard and you don't want to completely. Uh, ruin or, or use up all of your energy before you've even really gotten through, you know, all the songs you want to play or whatever. So um, I'll say that for now. And uh, we're basically getting into some uh, warm-ups first. Um, so first warm-up here uh, works to isolate both feet. So we've got um, two groupings of 16th notes on the right foot and then the same thing for the left foot. So are, um, you not, are you using at all the flat foot technique in this or are you just basically warming up your feet, right? This is basically just a warm-up. Um, and uh, what I would do for this is take it to basically your max speed. So for me, this is going to be a flat foot. If you've never tried the flat foot before, um, or you've got another technique you use, you just just use whatever whatever feels natural. Sure, so sure. Um, yeah, I'll start with just the first one. It's just all on the bass drum. We can eventually add in uh, you know a four four beat and a back beat if we want to. So I'll start with the bass drum and then I'll add in a beat to it as well. Okay. Really simple, and uh, I'm already kind of warmed up, so I'm kind of just fluttering and, and twitching right through it. But um, uh, if, if you noticed with mine, my, my right foot was a lot stronger than my left foot, and this is also a great exercise to build the strength of your left foot because it isolates it. Um, you never want to just be practicing always alternating because your left foot never really gets good 
at any independence or any extra strength. It just, it's, used, it's used to falling in line behind your right foot. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't ever want to have any of our limbs dependent on others. So, Very good point. Yeah. Very good point. Still catching my breath from that song, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's okay. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, let you take a breath here because I just want to say one more thing. Um, first off, for anybody here who loves Dromeo and who's been waiting to get back in on it, we have a huge announcement tomorrow at 10 o'clock. <coughs> if you haven't already signed up for notification, just go to Dromeo.com and sign up. But uh, basically, be in tune and be uh, uh, online tomorrow at 10 o'clock. I think we're going to be launching uh, an email to everybody, and it's going to be a huge opportunity for you guys all who have been wanting to get into Dromeo. So make sure you're okay. Uh, uh, sorry, you're signed up for that and you're ready for that. Another thing is, is when I was talking about the giveaways, basically ask, <coughs> go to facebook.com slash Dromeo, like us, and then post on there what kind of foot technique do you use and why. I'm going to randomly pick some people from uh, the recent posts, and I'm going to give you a shirt, uh, whether it's the, the new gray one or whether it's the black one or whether it is a month free membership to Dromeo because I'm going to give away two of those as well. Awesome. Very Ready cool. to get back into it? Yeah. Um, and actually, I'm going to add an extra little piece to this warm-up on number one. This isn't written down, um, but it's really simple. Um, basically, uh, start by alternating your feet and then play the same speed but just with one foot. So, say, go alternating, right, alternating, left, alternating, right, alternating, left. You want to show us what that looks like on the feet? Absolutely. Maybe go, go, a little, go a little slower for this one, too. Yeah. So, basically, again, um, th this is something that maybe will feel a little bit more musical or a little bit more of a beat because you can actually get into the groove and then suddenly you're isolating your, le your right foot and then get into the groove, isolating your left foot. And so it really helps you to focus on um, consistency and continuity because if they're sounding very different from alternating, well, you're going to want to address that and really work on that. Same as if you're doing a single stroke roll and then you go to a double stroke roll. The, the goal is to see if you can make them sound as close to, get, or close to, the, to one another as possible. So same idea with that. Cool. Um, Do you want to actually, before we get into the exercises, because the exercises I can see right now are really going to work out your feet. Mm -hmm. Do you want to maybe explain what the flat foot is? Because I mean, e even for me, I mean, I've seen you do it, but I mean, I would love to know exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it. So flat foot technique, um, it's basically you're keeping your foot not fully flat. Um, but what that means is, is it's uh, your, your heel is going to be floating. So almost like it's flat or, or, or parallel with the ground. It doesn't work out to be quite that way, but... When I do heel toe, or sorry, heel toe, what am I talking about? When I do flat foot, um, my heels generally hover inch to an inch and a half above the floor, depending on how comfortable I'm playing and uh, how hard I'm pushing myself. Um, so as you can see, uh, we've got the foot cam going on the right. So yep. this is basically what your foot's going to look like during flat foot. And some people will also just call this ankle motion, but it all kind of uh, culminates in, in the same, same end goal, which is basically just getting this motion going right here. And um, it's very similar to if you're just sitting down and your ankle's twitching like that. It's all basically shin and ankle down there. So none of this lifting your, your feet up and really, really tiring yourself out. That's why heel up is great to a point, but I find after, after a while it can really tire you up because you're using your whole leg and your whole legs are gonna tire out a lot quicker than the smaller muscles down here. So this is basically flat foot without a pedal. So with a pedal, uh, really slowly it looks like this. So it's almost, it's almost like a twitch, almost. It's almost like a twitch. It's a controlled twitch, though. Uh, any twitch in musical, or in, in music in general, is, is completely useless because it's not controlled. So this is basically a controlled twitch, which is why it's uh, completely unusable at slow tempos, since it does rely on twitch muscles, and twitch muscles don't twitch slowly. Otherwise, you'd be kind of just sounding, you know. Well, it wouldn't be called a twitch, then, I guess. Eh? Yeah. Unless you have some sort of severe nerve disability or something like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, basically... I like to slide back on the pedal. Uh, that's where the flat foot really, really excels. Um, that's why I like to use long birds too, because you get extra distance to slide back on. And then you just have the ball of your foot on and then the rest of the foot off. At least that's how I like to do it. And uh, you basically keep it flat on the pedal and you get that twitch going. Um, now, 
This goes hand in hand with heal up, which is why I, th I found that I really like it because it doesn't require an extra motion like say heel toe, which is something that I've never quite been able to get my, my feet to do properly. Maybe because it's, it's such a different motion. I, I like just, you know, with, with heel up, you're up and then with flat foot, you're still the same motion, but just optimized and smaller. And do you always have your foot that far back on the pedal? If I'm playing heavier and, and powering through, my feet are usually more like up here. Okay. You guys can see the foot. Yeah. So you get more of a, more of an angle on it. More of an angle and it becomes more of a, more of a heel up. And then as I get faster, it stays back here. So okay. uh, it, I'll, I'll actually play a quick, a quick run of uh, eighth notes and the sixteenth notes and you'll see how my feet actually naturally go back here for the, uh, for the faster ones for the flat foot. Drum, Drum Jack 52 says, man, I've been doing that for quite a while. I didn't even know it, it, it was called something. Um, so, so I guess some people just naturally, and that's how it was with me with the slide technique. I just naturally found out what works for me and, and started doing it, but you didn't know it was called something. So. Yeah, you, you, you find something that works and you go with it. And it doesn't even matter what you're calling it really as long as it works for you. Like mm -hmm. it, it just makes it a lot easier for people to uh, learn about the same thing when you, you call it the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do exercise two here, and this basically focuses again on isolating the two feet, but then also you'll see we've got uh, two eighth notes, four sixteenth notes, and then we switch to the other foot and go two eighth notes and four sixteenth notes. And this is basically going to um, get you used to switching between maybe heel up or heel down or whatever you use, and then the flat foot. That's kind of the, the goal of this exercise right here. Cool. One thing I should also mention is um, when, you're, when you've slid back on your pedal and you're doing flat foot, you're partially running off of momentum and you keep that going to kind of rebound. And so you can get some decent power out of that. But if you're playing slower and you're farther back on your pedal, you're going to have much, much worse power, worse control, and it's not re really going to sound that great. So that's why we, we play our, our more powerful strokes either up forward if you're doing heels up or if you're doing heels down. Still, you're probably going to be a little bit higher up. Yeah. Also, say one more thing. We have this notated on the hi hats. You were playing it on the ride symbol there, but I mean, you can do it either way. Just, right. Just because just, it's sloshy and all. Just to sound clean, so we we can even actually cinch this down, make it a little bit easier. Perfect. Yeah. So, do you want to do that one a little bit faster, maybe, to to, to get that power or? Absolutely. Beautiful. Yeah. So now we start getting into exercises that are a little bit more interesting because they're actually real beats. Um, number three is fun. It's a burst of um, four thirty-second notes followed by an eighth note, which is mainly a burst of five. And uh, yeah, it's it's a little bit easier to do once you kind of um, start to figure out how to get the flat foot going. This is going to help you to kind of control sort of the twitch motion that you use. So in quick little bursts so that you kind of get your left foot to follow where you want it to go without trying to dig right in and play, you know, an entire Monomarth song using flat foot and it's just going to sound, you know, like popcorn or something. <laughs> Sounds good. So here's number three. That's what I was searching for. Right yeah, there. yeah, that's some crazy speeds there. What, what would you, who would you recommend uh, to try this technique? I mean, is it somebody who plays a lot more heels down? Is it someone who plays um, heel toe? Like, if somebody was saying, you know, what technique should I use? What, who would you recommend the the heel or the flat foot technique to? I think this is mainly for 
the uh, the heels up and the heels downers. Um, it's just a little bit na more natural if your heels are already down, you can slide back for faster stuff, or if your heels are up, you can again just slide back for faster stuff. Um, and chances are, if you're just learning flat foot, you probably don't do swivel. Flat uh, swivel actually kind of goes hand in hand with flat foot. Um, it goes from becoming a straight ankle motion to becoming almost a side to side ankle motion. Mm -hmm. If you're doing heel toe, um, you might not have any use for the flat foot, but that's totally fine. Or if you've got some other uh, double stroke method, like you know, I think some guys do like constant release and other cool stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This is more for achieving single strokes. Cool, cool, awesome. Yeah. So number four builds on number three. So we've got the group of four with the one. So or so, yeah, group of four and then a snare at the end, and then we've got a group of eight. Um, and it just sounds like we're, we're getting a little bit faster. We're getting to larger groupings of, uh, of our flat foot technique here, so. Sorry guys, I was reading that all the same. <laughs> Both of those sounded awesome, by the way. <laughs> I, think, I think the first one you just did two groups of 30 second notes, or two groups of eight, uh, and I wouldn't call for a group of 16s, but both yeah. of those are, were awesome. And actually, this one again is the idea of uh, feeling the difference between the slower speed and the faster speed. So your, your comfortable double kick versus your flat foot that's probably gonna be not so comfortable. It's almost good to isolate those two too, when you know the speed that you need to hit in order to move to flat foot technique. Um, so then, because it is a different approach you have to it, it's a different thought process, and you move your foot, your feet down, like I'm seeing you play those two patterns differently on your feet. Um, so it's also good to be able to go through those back and forth fast. Yeah. And uh, to be able to uh, recognize the speed that, oh, I'm gonna have to bring in that, that twitch almost. Exactly, it's definitely an intentional thing. Even if you stumble across it and you just start doing it, you are still gonna notice that you're not hitting as hard when you're going faster and maybe your feet's on a, or your foot's on a different part of the pedal board. So it's definitely intentional. So it's definitely good to be aware of what your body's doing when you're playing. Okay. Got a cool question from Daniel J. Jones. He says, does that twitch motion come from the front of your foot or from the back? Basically, it's almost uh, the same as if you're just lifting your heel. Like, just think like, have you ever been nervous and you're just, your leg's just twitching totally by itself? or you're, you're trying to lift your heel but ever slightly and then it starts doing this. Like that's not really something I'm even voluntarily doing, it's just I'm trying to hold, my, hold the weight of my leg up. And so that's why this is actually a pretty good technique for a lot of people because it gets to the point where you're basically uh, holding the weight of your leg up but controlling it and you actually start getting the flutter going. Mm -hmm. And then you just need to rein it in, make it a tool rather than just... A focus. A fo yeah. Yeah, no, I... I um I see the speeds you get on that, especially with that lower track that you're doing there. Well, there, there are some guys that can take this and go way faster than I can, and those guys, um, yeah, Blow your pretty, pretty impressive. Um, got another quick question for you. This is all based around the the uh, um, uh, flat foot technique. Mm -hmm. um, this is from T Crush, and he says, "What is the big difference between flat foot and heels up?" They look quite the same to me. Sorry if it's a noob question. It's not a noob question. They, no. they, they look similar. It's um, especially on, on the screen sometimes, it can actually look almost identical. Um, heels up is, it's really using your legs. Um, I think they say it's, it's the hip flexors and, and whatever else. Uh, pardon me if that's wrong, but basically it's it's using your legs and you really start to power through and almost push down. There's a lot of your toes too. To yeah, dig you're, you're using your toes and you're slamming your toes down and yeah. uh, it's almost like you're trying to step on something and flatten it. Whereas uh, flat foot, you're not using your leg, you're actually, like I said, you're lifting your leg up with the muscles down here. So it, it can sometimes look the same, but it's a totally different muscle group. And uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll play as fast as I can, heels up, and then I'll play as fast as I can, uh, flat foot, and you'll see that it's, it's a little bit different, and my body will be doing something a little bit different too. Cool, cool. So this is heels up first.
a lot of power there, um, but my legs were tense, like totally tense, and I could feel the throbbing starting to go through my legs because I'm essentially just totally tensing my whole body. You start to feel it in your core, and you can do some damage that way. Some guys can work with it, and if, if, you're, if it works for your body, go for it. But just You'd don't. be a, a really good tap dancer by the time you're done. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So just uh, um, listen to how your body's feeling. If, if you're hurting yourself, then don't do it. So now, now we'll do the, the flat foot and kind of compare how they look. They might have looked sort of similar, but when you see the total body in motion, it's completely different. I don't know if you guys could see that on the camera, but basically I was totally relaxed and just sitting here playing, whereas the other one I was really just trying to yeah. keep it reined in while not uh, getting a hernia. <laughs> okay, one more quick question here. Um, this is from As, <laughs> As Caesar. When I play flat foot, I tend to bounce the pedal underneath my foot on the front of my foot. Is this acceptable for playing or will it end up in problems later on? You try to bounce the pedal, so like, like that? Yeah, he just says, I tend to bounce the pedal under under my foot on the front of my foot. Instead of, because you always have your foot on the pedal at all times, like your toes at least. It yeah, looks like. well, um, I keep my, I don't do any bouncing. I keep my foot always on the pedal because that's um, motion that I'm cutting out. Whereas if this is the, if this is the, the footboard and this is your foot, and you're always doing that, you're moving farther than if you're just moving together at the same time. So... You might be losing, uh, or you might be burning some extra energy. I don't know if it's going to result in problems. But also, if you're in a recording situation, you'll actually be able to hear the foot hitting the pedal, and they're not going to like that. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's give away some shirts. Then I want to get you to do a play along, and we have uh, four more exercises that we're going to go through here. Can I have a new shirt? Hey. I want a new shirt. Those things look nice. They are nice. You have to submit on Facebook if you want a shirt, Sean. You know Okay, that. okay. Uh, okay, so I'm going to refresh, and I asked you guys what kind of technique to use on your feet, uh, whether it's flat foot, swivel, heel toe, slide, heels up, heels down. I'm sure there's more, but uh, let me just see here. Okay, so um, I'm going to give you three letters. This is how Jared does it, and I like the way he does it. I'm going to give you three letters. I think we did this last time. You're going to give me a letter uh, out of those three, okay? Okay. Okay, D... Y or J? D, Y, J. Y. Y, okay. So I, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Yesha Pedal Stokes, Y apostrophe S H U A um, P E D A L L Stokes. Congratulations, you've won a shirt. He says, um, I use a modified heel toe or toe heel. My feet are small enough to put my heel on the middle of the pedal, and I use my weight of my leg to slam my heel on the pedal, followed by the toes. I use this both, um, or sorry, this uses both the shin and calf muscles so I can go much faster for much longer. Cool. Very cool. Email me. My uh, email is dave at drumeo.com. Email me with your size and address. I'll ship you a shirt right away. Okay, we got another one. I got another Y. I've got a, uh, one sec here. Oh, nice. I got a Y, I've got a Z, and I have got an L. Definitely taking the Z. Definitely taking the Z. Yeah. Z, your name uh, is actually Z, Z E D, Z Nettlemeyer. He says, um, foot technique is heels up with some slide. So email me, dave at drumeo.com, and I'll get you a shirt sent out right away. Um, I use heels up, I use slide. I haven't really tried the flat foot yet, but I mean, like you were saying, twitching, I twitch all the time. Like when I'm waiting for something, when I'm on the phone, when I'm just checking email. It doesn't make a sound, and it's a great way to practice. Exactly. Yeah. If I apply that to the bass drum, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll uh, be as fast as you someday. <laughs> okay, so um, do you want to do a play-along? Because we've got a couple more exercises to go, but I'd love yeah. to see you do the um, track. And before I do the play-along, I just want to mention how the flat foot technique is a different muscle group. Um, what tends to happen when you're playing and you don't really have an out is once you tire out one muscle group, another muscle group will take over. Um, one thing that, that happens with me is if I'm a little bit too tense or I haven't warmed up or, um, or whatever the issue is, if, if my smaller uh, muscles actually tire out um, before the end of my set or the end of the song that I'm playing, I find that I naturally go from flat foot to heels up and then I'm even more tired and then usually after that song I feel like I'm pretty much done. So 
just just watch yourself on that because you may think that you're practicing flat foot, but you've already tired out and you're practicing heels up. So just just be aware of that. Well, it's also nice if you are doing a long set, you get tired, you have the ability to switch to another muscle group, whereas a lot of times Definitely. people just get used to only using one muscle group. Yeah. And then they're tired and they're tired, they're done. Also, if you know that you've got um, a couple faster songs in the set, uh, you can actually even plan it around. Okay, this is going to be, this is my heels up song. So that's fine. I can totally tire out my heels up or my, my heels up technique. And then the two flat foot songs are at the end of the set. And that's usually what First Rain does. They have this, well, they have Lore, which we already played, which is the fastest song in the set. And they throw that at me at the very end after I'm already tired from playing really hard, but then I go into my more finesse, my, my flat foot end, and I can make it through no problem. Cool. Yeah. What song do you have to play for us now? Uh, I guess we've got to get the, uh, Kyle to, to load her up. Yeah, you know what? This is, this is a song by a band called Undercurrents that I, I played for a while ago. And um, at the time, the song was called Ouch. I don't actually remember the, the new title. I think it's called Your End Is Near. And it's, it's a little bit more uh, straight ahead, kind of Fear Factory-esque. Cool. You got to load it up there, Kyle? Yep, good to go. Beautiful. Let's, uh, let's hear it.
Awesome stop. But I hope my end of Italy isn't near. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Cool. So what band was that called, sorry? Undercurrents. Undercurrents? Awesome. Pretty heavy stuff, but the drumming was fantastic. I love it. Uh, and you were using a lot of uh, the techniques you're talking about in there, so pretty cool. A lot of uh, a lot of heel up in between the flat foot parts. And uh, yeah, sorry, I missed the missed the start there. But you're supposed to say that was part of the song. It was part of the song. It was uh, it was an artistic. He started entrance. he started exactly where you wanted to start. <laughs> Um, cool. So we got some more warm ups that are, or exercises that we want to go to. And it, it, on the sheet music here, we even have uh, say on there play exercises five to eight uh, with a normal backbeat other than two or four just to get basic time going. And what are these exercises designed for? Because basically you're just going back from eighths to sixteenths and stuff. We're talking five to eight. Yeah. Five to, yeah. It's it's basically practicing mixing it between your your technique of choice and then going into the flat foot. So for me, I'm going to be going all through heels up, and then when I see a, a quick burst there, it's going to be flat foot. And again, part of it might look like it's heels up, but it's all about the muscle group, and uh, my, my heel will dip down a little bit. So. Quick question before you start. This one's from uh, Viking. He just set, submitted it. Um, he said he went to a Derek Roddy clinic last night, and he noticed that he was uh, teaching the flat, or using the flat foot uh, for the face melting speeds, but he was using Axis longboards as well. Do these pedals help out with the uh, technique in, in particular, or does any pedal work for that? First off, that would be an awesome clinic to see. I haven't seen him yet, so sweet. Yeah. Um, the longboards definitely do help um, since this technique relies on, on pulling back from the pedals a little bit. It lets you slide back a little bit more. Um, since you're working on making the pedal move off of momentum in its current motion, um, the farther back you can slide, the more energy you can save and the more movement you can save. So, so whereas if you weren't using a flat foot, your foot would be, or sorry, a flat foot, uh, a longboard, your foot farther up here. I like to slide back a little bit more back here and uh, it just makes the job a little bit easier. It's still totally applicable on any kind of pedal, but mm -hmm. these are just more geared towards that playing. Cool. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. Continue. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll do exercise five. Um, now these, there's no real point to do these too slow because then the flat foot isn't really even necessary. So I'll play these a little bit faster and uh, we'll, we'll just get started. We'll, we'll do number five and then we'll debrief after that. With a backbeat as well. It's not written down like we said, but we'll, we're gonna play it. fun one and uh, sometimes I use triggers but I'm not today and so it actually gives it this kind of cool little dynamic feel when you get to the, the run of the flat foot it almost sounds a little bit more smooth whereas if you're using a trigger it would sound very machine like so I'm glad we're not using triggers today actually so that it, that's really good to throw in uh, a little burst in the end like in exercise five here because it will totally throw you off balance and that's good the more you can practice and the more that you can you can try to play and get balanced, the better player you're going to be. Just kind of like how two weeks ago, when I was here talking about developing speed, speed's all about um, uh, being prepared for whatever combination you can think of spur of the moment. So if there's some crazy little foot patterns you want to do, and you're already used to throwing in a little burst there, it's not going to sound bad. So um, if we have time, I actually want to show a couple examples of maybe adding little bursts. Yeah, sure. Let's go through six, seven, eight. We got we have quite a few questions that I would love to get to. I know usually Mondays we don't have a lot of time to get to all the questions, but I, there's some really good ones in here. So we'll go through number six, seven, eight, and see what we have Kay. time left. So, so first off, just like I said, I'm going to show you a couple examples of adding this little burst of four in between. So you can use that burst to actually add a groove within the more static double kick run, which mm -hmm. is fun. 
almost like a little herd almost. Yeah, almost, yeah. Cool. Same idea. So do you want to do questions or go through yeah, six, seven? Yeah, let's go through six, seven, okay. eight, and then we'll get to the questions. So six is the same idea as five, but now we've added another run of the uh, 16th notes or the flat foot. So it's going to be um, four eighth notes and then eight sixteenth notes. I want to say drum and finance says man that sounds like my my v twin harley nice <laughs> that's sweet hot for teacher yeah or a joy Wojcik said the same thing he's like now play hot for teacher uh that's good that's the hurdle lesson right there yeah exactly so now seven we take it up another notch even less eighth notes and they've been replaced by 16th notes so now this exercise is more just testing your ability to go from speed to uh, a little break of slow if you want to accent you know symbols in a beat but go back to the speed again And you can actually even see in the foot cam how my feet are doing the flat foot, but then they they go up and do a little heel toe and actually accent it. It gets louder. And again, if you practice um, the flat foot the way we're talking about, that just becomes natural. I'm not trying to do that. Cool. Yeah. Got your breath caught? <laughs> <laughs> this, is the, got this, is, this is a lot of work and a lot of running, a lot of tap dancing on those pedals. Okay. So eight. I think there might have been a little bit of a misinterpretation of the beat here. Um, this is actually going to be quite similar to six, but just double time, pretty much. So we have our slower run, which is the 16th notes, and our faster run, which is the 32nd notes, but it's just twice as long. So I, I see what you did. Yeah. How you, how you, you condensed it. OK. Beautiful. So we're going to play this technically at halftime, so those 32nd notes aren't going to be life, or light speed. Sorry. <laughs> Now, this exercise actually brings up a good, um, a good issue, um, something that I used to struggle with, and still a little bit until I, until I really notice what's going on. But basically, most drummers have a tendency to really forget about the dynamics of everything else on the kit when they're trying to get their kicks going fast. So you'll see guys, they're playing really, really heavy, and then when the, when the, the fast kicks turn, or come in, the snare is suddenly just like... When previously in the song it was like this, and so, like number eight here, uh, you really want to make sure to keep a good backbeat, like I was just doing, like this again. Never let the dynamic of the rest of the kit. Uh, slip back because you're working on the kicks because really you want to add the kicks in and bring the dynamic up but it's actually going to stay where it is or even go down because the kicks are in there but everything else kind of goes down a notch cool very good point to bring up because i know that with, with me too when you're focusing on something your other things put get put on the back burner yeah totally. um so thanks very much uh, for, for going through those there. we got a bunch of questions that we'll get through to, uh, through here too. But you guys, at the end of the lesson, we are going to give away two free month passes to Drumeo. Drumeo, we do this every day basically. And um, if you haven't noticed, this whole week, if you've looked at the schedule, it's all about foot control. And it's not just about double bass. Flat foot technique you can use on a single pedal. Um, and uh, tomorrow we're talking about just developing your, your hi-hat independence with your foot. Uh, and then actually we're talking about bass drum dynamic on Wednesday, which is going to be a really cool lesson. Cool. 
And then Mike McCallico is going to own all of us with some independence exercises with your left <laughs> foot. So it's going to be a lot of fun. This whole week is just on feet and developing your control and dynamics. But with Dromeo, we do kind of like week um, week to week theme lessons you know uh, i think we have a lesson or next week is all about um uh, rudiments and practicing on the pad uh, we have some heavy metal stuff coming up we have some jazz some latin coming up so it's going to be a lot of fun also make sure you sign up for prior notification on drumio.com because tomorrow we are uh, there's a huge announcement tomorrow and um just about uh, said it. yeah just about said well it's 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 pretty clear we're pretty basically reopening drumio tomorrow um for everybody who's not a part of drumio who wants to be a part of it um so definitely come uh come to drumio.com tomorrow check your email and all that and um to get the free membership if you wanted to to, to win that just go to facebook.com slash drumio and then Basically, like us and write on our wall what type of foot technique to use and why. And I'm going to give away two memberships to that. Um, but before we do that, i got a couple quick questions. This one's from Karen, and I wanted to ask you this specifically uh, before, before too late here because it's a really good question. For those of us with one bass pedal, what are some exercises that you can suggest for us to get ready to eventually move to two pedals? This is amazing, by the way. Hmm. Well, you can always... Um use your hi-hat pedal and just start using it more um, to, to add different rhythms rather than just a timekeeper or just to open and close the hats. So uh, I've, I've had a number of students who they've actually practiced their, their double bass with, with the hopes of getting one soon with the hi-hat pedal. Okay. And it might, it might feel a little bit off balance, but it will actually get your, your left foot used to um, the dynamic and the feel of, uh, of, of a double pedal because it's going from just single to alternating uh, it, it can be a little bit difficult at first, especially when everything else um, comes into play. So I would recommend just doing something like this. And you kind of have to have the hi-hats open maybe a little bit more so you have that actual feel of traveling on the pedal. Something like this. Just do some blast beats with the hi hats, right? Hat blast. Hat blast. <laughs> That's cool. But basically, any 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 place you can put in your hats and start just utilizing your your left foot more. I guess. Yeah. Eh? I wouldn't try that in most musical situations. Just maybe practice because that's not going to sound too pleasing. It, it didn't sound like a proper beat. Um, but yeah, just get, getting your left foot used to doing a little bit more work because once you get a double pedal, um, it should be doing a lot more. Mm -hmm. Cool. Would you ever recommend? mirroring your kit and just playing with your left foot. I know I've, I've heard of some people who do, who do that. That's a lot of work. Definitely. But. And that's that's not even double kick so much. It's just working on your left foot independence and, yeah. and uh, totally Good flipping point. everything out. Good point. Okay, so Captain Bob says, do you recommend adjusting your foot pedal to suit the strength of your uh, your suit your strength differences? My left is, is uh, more firm like my hi-hats. Um, I would probably keep both pedals as similar as possible. Um, otherwise, you're trading your both feet different from one another. So I, I try to keep the beaters the same. They're a little bit wonky right now, but um, I try to keep them as, as far apart, or sorry, as the same distance from the head as possible. I try to keep the spring tension the same. I try to keep the footboard height the same. I try to keep everything the same, and that way uh, the goal is to have a balanced, balanced foot technique with both feet. Um, Otherwise, if you if you adjust the pedal to suit the foot, well, the foot's weaker, so the foot's always going to be weaker. Then you mm -hmm. don't want that. Good point. Um, some people might adjust it to be a lot more difficult, but then again, your left foot might end up being stronger. You don't want one stronger; you want them equal. Mm -hmm. Cool. David IV David Div says, "Is it possible to go above two hundred and fifty beats per minute with the flat foot technique?" Definitely. Some guys take it up to. I think the fastest I've seen is like two eighty. Really? A after that, it's... You're talking alternating 16s, just singles? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How fast do you go on there, or have you uh, This morning, because I, I knew that we'd be doing this today, um, I, was, I, I wasn't going for speed, but I was just... I would take myself up to about 220, so that when I brought myself back down to 200, everything was so much easier. Mm -hmm. So on, on a really, really good day, I'll be practicing, uh, you know, maybe four to eight bar bursts of 240, 
which is a lot shorter when you're going at that speed. So it's not like I'm playing for like 30 seconds at 240. But you're controlling the, the bursts. But I'm working well. in, at controlling it exactly at, at higher speeds. Wow. So there you go, David. Dev, the, if you want to get past 250, then this is the technique for you. Um, okay, so one more quick question for you, and then we'll give some stuff away. This one's actually from Doc5. He says, this guy holds a stick so close to the end, but it's amazing they don't go flying out of your hands. Explain. They sometimes do. They sometimes do. Should I, think, I watch I think, myself here? <laughs> I think I think we had, th this was pointed out at the last lesson, and really, when I'm playing really busy stuff, um, or, or metal, or, or speed, I for some reason, I always just tend to end up holding them about there. And a lot of people tell you that's not correct. Usually correct is more like that, and it's all wrist motion, but yeah. I start playing French, and I find that I can move around less. So I do a little bit more work with my fingers and my wrists, but my body does a little bit less work because the sticks are a little bit farther out. So take that with a grain of salt. It works for me. Um, it's not what I would teach other people to do, but it definitely works because I don't like to be always searching for stuff. And I find that when I hold the sticks like this and I'm playing fast, I usually end up missing stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess as long as it works for you, right? And you haven't had any issues with it. Yeah. All the better. I, I got another question here. This one's from Captain Kickars. He says, uh, "Guys, I've had the time. I've had some time to download these MP3s and execute these lessons before the lesson actually started." And he's actually very frustrated. He says, "I can ex execute every single one of these exercises with just my feet, but once I start adding my hands, I seem to get uh, the syncopation um, goes crazy, and it just won't cooperate." So he says, "Usually, when I count things out, I can get it. But what am I doing wrong?" You probably just need to slow down and uh, start getting that muscle memory going. With, with everything together, if you can get that slow slow at first, your body will eventually internalize that and you can bring up the tempo. So it's the thing that no one wants to hear, but you got to slow down. It's not going to sound as cool, but it will sound cool eventually when you, when you bring it up to speed. Mm -hmm. And maybe just work on one, adding one limb at a time then, because he was saying specifically hi-hats and ride and all that. Uh, maybe just don't keep, keep your snare out of the mix right now and just work on... Totally, it's, usually the, it's usually the snare that does it. Yeah. Um, if you guys watched uh, the lesson I did two weeks ago, um, I played a couple of my songs that I've written, and some of those are just ridiculously technical beats. And I'll, I'll program them on my computer first because they sound cool, and then I'll sit down on my kit and I'll realize that they're way more difficult than I thought. And so I'll learn the, the bass room pattern first, usually, and then start adding, you know, eighth note on the ride or on, on the hi-hats. And then it's the snare that always screws with me because I'm trying to keep like a, a good solid backbeat. So that's totally normal. Um, I wouldn't really worry about it. Just, yeah, one thing at a time. Add, add your, your ride or your hats or, or whatever first. Your, your riding pattern and then add the snare in the backbeat afterwards. Exactly. And, and Captain, you even said that usually when I count things out, you can get it, which just reinforces what Sean's saying. Just slow down and maybe take it one, one, one note at a time. Here, here's another idea. Um, this, is, this is a little bit different. I, this is how I, I uh, try to learn really, really complex parts is I will break them down into into blocks, so into quarter note groupings. So you're like, okay, I've got um, four sixteenth notes on the kick, and I've got two eighth notes on the ride, and I've got a snare, or a quarter note snare on, on the snare, obviously. So I'll learn it like this, or for, for the first block, so I'll, I'll play just the block. And if the pattern is just that but repeated, well then I'll do it and then I'll do it again a little bit closer and then I'll do two in a row, three in a row, four in a row, add a crash in there and see if I can just keep it going on and on and on. So just in little chunks. And again, that becomes still a muscle memory. You remember what the, what the block feels like or you can just learn it and add one layer at a time. Cool. That's a really good way of doing it. I'm just looking at all these Facebook comments and guys, this is awesome. You guys have a, I read, a, try to read all of them and I'm getting a lot of cool feedback just based on what different kind of techniques for example like Robert Ward said the song dictates the style slow flat fast heels up heels down that's true too if you're playing jazz and stuff you want to make sure that you're not getting a lot of power out of there and but if you're playing metal and stuff you might want to use some more that speed oriented um, and all that but let me give away some month-long free memberships and for anybody who don't get in on this, and even if you guys do win the free memberships, definitely still consider uh, uh, um, signing up because, like I said, we do this every day. It's a lot of fun. There's a ton of awesome questions in here from our Drumio community that we just don't have time to get to, and I wish we did. On the Monday or the Tuesday to Friday lessons, we make sure we get to all the questions guaranteed, and um, it's great. We just hang out, chat, get to know everybody, and you guys ask uh, the actual drummers who teach the lessons questions, so it's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so here we go. I'm going to give you three letters, okay? 
Okay. D, W, and J. Hmm. It's a sign. There was a J before and I didn't pick it. Is it J? It's J. Okay, Jamie Ray Ray. I mainly use the slide technique, and I just developed it by itself because I was playing along with my favorite songs and needed to speed up. Totally, it's exactly the same thing I did. And then I brought the I bought the drumming system and saw it. I was an actual technique, and I'm also trying the heel toe at the moment. Awesome, Jamie Ray Ray. Email me, Dave at Railroad. I almost said Rail Media. Dave at Drumeo.com. D R U M E O dot com. I will set you up, and if you already have a Drummy membership, um, we'll work something out. Okay. Another one, I've got another, I've got W, I've got A, and I've got another D. W, A, D. We'll, we'll do D. D. Final answer. Final answer? Okay, Daniel Hallbrook says, I use the heel toe mostly, but I'm trying others just to have more options in the future. Cool, heel toe, that's Jared's specialty, not my specialty. Not mine either, I've tried it and... Uh, doesn't sound good. Doesn't sound good. No. <laughs> it doesn't sound good for me either, but Jared makes it sound amazing, and I've heard other people just completely own it. In fact, I was watching um, a music video by Dragon Force, and he uses the heel toe. Oh, is that? That's what he's doing for his doubles. Yeah, uh, what's his face? Macintosh. Uh, can't remember Dave, his name. I David think it's Macintosh. David Macintosh. Yeah, he uses the heel toe, and I was like, I wonder what he's doing for that, because I wouldn't. I, I mean, I've been to one of their shows. It's like an hour and a half long of them just doing nothing but. Um, 200 beat, 220 beat per minute. Actually, there's this crazy, crazy. Uh, death metal band they're, they're symphonic though so there's like orchestral stuff behind the entire thing and it's all like 240 to 280 BPM and the guy's just doing heel toe the entire time and it's just really? like it. You, you you listen to it and you're like come on man seriously like it sounds awesome but come on yeah <laughs> give, give us a break here. give us a break <laughs> so congratulations Daniel Hallbrook D-A-N-I-L H-O-L-B-R-O-O-K email me dave at drumeo.com and I will set you all up um, thank you guys, everybody, for coming out. I appreciate it. There was a lot of people in, in, in the lesson today. Um, you did an awesome job. Thank you. I'm going to try the technique. I'm not going to say I'm going to adopt it, but I'm going to try it out because it looks looks like you can get some Make friends with it. You don't need to take it on as your own, but just, you know. Exactly. And then I'll be tap dancing before you know it. <laughs> cool. Well, everybody, thank you very much. Make sure you guys check your emails tomorrow. Go to drumio.com tomorrow morning. Huge announcements, all that cool stuff. And uh, I'll see you all, if not tomorrow, next week. Cheers. <laughs>